Those familiar strains of the Beatles and Hey Jude will tell you that the two sets of players have emerged from the tunnel. We are just about ready for kickoff. Thomas Frank, the Brentford manager, is applauding all four sides of this GTEC Community Stadium. And looking at the reaction, Dean Ashton, that he's getting back from these Brentford supporters. Certainly no pressure from the fans on their manager, despite this poor run they're on. No, because I think they can understand that they're missing key players. But at the same time, this can't go on forever. It was a, a horrible defeat against today's opponents, Wolves, when they came here only a few weeks ago and beat them 4-1. So there's got to be a reaction to that, I'm sure. But if you're going to go on form, you have to go with Wolves. You know, Gary O'Neill's gone very strong with his team selection, but so have Brentford. So you would say Wolves are slight favourites. It will be Wolverhampton Wanderers with that big victory here in the Premier League just a few days ago, no doubt still fresh in their minds, who will get us underway on FA Cup third round Friday here on Talk Sport. Wolves in their blue away strip, shooting from right to left in this first half, sky blue away strip, Brentford in... The red and white striped jerseys, black shorts and black socks attacking from left to right. And just surveying the bees line up. Dean, are we, are we seeing King Lewis Potter in a wing back role as expected? We are off and underway here on Talk Sport 2. And I think King Lewis Potter has started over on that left hand side. Yeah, absolutely. I think. I think he's versatile. He can play right through the middle as a, as a central striker. He can play out wide and clearly can play as a, a wing-back. And he's not going to play as a defensive wing-back, is he? He's going to probably stay very, very high. And Ruslef on this right-hand side, I think he'll tuck right in. Well, it's an early free kick here for Brentford. Neil Mope, who is no stranger to going down theatrically, is just holding his face. And that was a high boot, actually from Pablo Sarabia, free kick for Brentford, midway inside the Wolves half of the pitch. Wolves defending the end of the ground where the two and a half travelling fans from Molyneux are situated. And Mope, Dean Ashton, not yet back on his feet. No, he seems OK. I think it's more a case of he's trying to say to the referee, you know, is there anything other than just a, a free kick in that scenario he's trying to show the referee the the bruise that he's already got on that right eye Mope well an early chance here for Brentford to commit bodies forward on the edge of the Wolves penalty area the free kick will be played in by Matthias Jensen he's played it out to that left hand side and the aforementioned Lewis Potter and then belatedly Jensen towards the back post where Pinnock was lurking and it was quite an important Header clear in the end and volleyed away by Totti, having won the initial ball into the area. Positive early start, though, from Brentford, despite the fact they've lost seven of their last eight matches and the last five on the spin. Nil-nil, and we've played two minutes here on Talk Sport 2. Yeah, they work very, very hard, don't they, on set plays and wide areas. Brentford, Thomas Frank, spoken openly about that, and it was an unusual setup with the three centre-backs starting probably 15 yards outside the penalty area and then once it was played short they made their way into the, the penalty area it's clearly something they'd worked on it was good work from Totti to win the header and Cunha who's excellent at travelling with the ball is on it yeah he's just dispossessed Jensen midway inside the Wolves half of the field but he gobbled up plenty of green grass there Matthias Cunha who started every Premier League game this season become a really important player for Gary O'Neill Totti forward over the halfway line for the visitors. And now Tommy Doyle, who was really impressive in the victory against Everton. In Wolves' last Premier League outing, his opportunities have been fairly limited since signing on loan from Manchester City. His last goal, in fact, Doyle was in this competition. It was a memorable one to earn Sheffield United a place in last season's semi-final. That long range yet against Blackburn in an all-championship quarter-final. Here come Wolves attacking on the left-hand side with Bellegarde. Sliding tackle, though, by Pinnock. Stops his progress. 
And it's back now inside the Brentford penalty area with a score still 0-0 here on Talk Sport 2. Jensen takes a bit of a chance because there are plenty of blue shirts inside the 18-yard box. He knocked the ball back to Strakosha, the goalkeeper, but Brentford have smuggled it clear to the halfway line. Then across comes Doyle and concede to throw. Well, it was a key feature to the win here for Wolves when they came here is they pressed the back line of Brentford, obviously without Tony and Mbwemo and Visser. It's not as easy for them just to hit that ball forward. They have to try and play out, and Wolves are looking for that. Scored a couple of goals from mistakes. Collins, in particular, had a poor evening. Yeah, Nathan Collins coming up against the club. He departed in a £23 million transfer in the summer. Again, they've gone back to the goalkeeper's Strakosha here, the Albanian making only his second appearance of the campaign. Fleck in the regular number one, not even on the bench tonight for Brentford as Thomas Frank, hands in pockets, watches on just below us here at the GTEC Community Stadium. Not an empty seat in the house under the floodlights on this Friday evening on TalkSport 2. We play five minutes, it's still nil-nil. Matthias Jensen being put under pressure deep inside his own half by Joe Gomez, but... Manages to pick out Zanka, playing on the right-hand side of that back three. And coming forward now. Down this near side, Brentford. But it's quickly won back by Santiago Bueno. And he goes back to the goalkeeper, Jose Sarr, who kept a rare clean sheet in that victory against Everton, only his second of the season. And Sarr with a little dink out to the right-hand side, headed on by Semedo. Now... Santiago Bueno will run it out from the back. Gomez out to that right-hand side. They've used the ball well here, Wolves, but as I say that, it's run out of play by Sarabia. And Brentford have a throw 15 yards inside their own half. It's still goalless. Very, very even start, isn't it, from the two sides? No real threat as yet. Might change here, though. Mope trying to roll the ball forward. De Silva have made the run in behind the Wolves' defence, but Wolves quickly... Regain possession, it's Doyle who plays it across the box to Doherty, who is starting as the left wing back. We did debate that before kickoff as well. Would it be Semedo on that side? But Doherty has played there more often than not when he has been used this season in his second spell at the club. The Republic of Ireland international back at Molyneux after stop-offs at Tottenham and Atletico Madrid. It was a brilliant servant, wasn't he, during his first spell, Dean Ashton? Well, and he was always a threat, actually, from that wide position, that fullback position. He always felt as, oh, that's a big mistake. Given away on the edge of the area, and here's Cunha, out comes the goalkeeper. He does just enough, and then it's lifted over his own crossbar by Pinnock. Strakosha to Brentford's rescue, and there were echoes there, Dean Ashton, of the first goal that Wolves scored in the Premier League meeting recently. They were caught playing their way out from the back. It was Strakosha who passed it straight to Cunha, and he just makes himself big and gets his body in the way. On this occasion, the ball doesn't find the back of the net. Last time round, Huang Hee Chan did tuck home. Corner for Wolves, first of the game. Seven minutes gone, Brentford lucky to still be level at nil-nil. In comes the corner, and the referee has spotted a foul on Zanka, and it will be a free kick for Brentford inside their own box. Well, it is massive, massive release for Strakosha. Just a simple ball out. It's a horrible mistake. Cunha reads the pass out. He then nips himself past Norgard. It's one of those situations, Cunha, as if he's not he's not expecting it. He's not he's not ready for it. He takes a, fir, a poor first touch, a poor second touch. Strakosha then narrows the angle. He flicks it against him, and then Zanka helps him out to whack it over the top. Cunha really should be putting Wolves 1-0 up. That was a massive mistake from the goalkeeper. Especially in the form that... Matthias Cunha has been in in recent weeks. Four goals in his last nine appearances for Wolves and already a big chance to put the visitors in front in this FA Cup third round tie. Nil-nil. And you're listening to Talk Sport 2. Don't forget over on Talk Sport. They are a little over half an hour away from kickoff Spurs against Burnley from the new Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And tomorrow, game day begins. With the tie of the round, in many people's opinion, 12.30 kick-off at the Stadium of Light as Sunderland take on bitter rivals Newcastle. So we've got another stoppage in play here. Christian Norgard is down, having been caught by a heavy challenge. And it was Jao Gomez. It's so a red. Who has been shown a straight red card. Wolverhampton Wanderers down to ten men. 
And Jao Gomez is making that walk of shame. He looks a little bit perplexed by it. He's just talking to Totti, his teammate, and protesting his innocence. Well, Dean Ashton, we need to take a second look at that. Norgard is still down receiving treatment. On first viewing, I'm not convinced that was a severe enough tackle for a red car. Clearly, nor is Sean Derry, Gary O'Neill's assistant, and he's actually just exchanging words with members of the Brentford backroom staff. What was your first reaction to that challenge? Well, I mean, because there was no reaction from the referee, Tony Harrington, he didn't produce a card straight away. He took his time, at least 30 seconds or so, and then all of a sudden the red cards come up. Is that because he's looked and seen possible injury to Norgard, where there clearly is an issue because Cunha, the opposition player, was waving to the medical staff to come on? So whether there is a, a serious injury to Norgard, and that has made the decision for the referee, Tony Harrington, a lot clearer. Well, we're watching a replay now. They're showing it on the big screens as well. I mean, that just isn't a red card, is no, it? No, I, I, look, he's ended up catching him on the ankle, but there's no malice at all. He's just trying to win the ball. It's not particularly high. Well, we had a VAR incident last night where Dominic Calvert-Lewin was shown a red card for a tackle that most of us agree wasn't. Are we going to see VAR intervention here? Jared Gillett and Rebecca Welch, two of them, watching at Stockley Park. It's one of those where he's probably caught him on the Achilles. I'm just not sure that's quite strong enough for a red. Again, you know, if, you, if you're talking about has he endangered an opponent, well, clearly, because Norgard is having to come off and being helped off, he's obviously got a serious ankle issue. Was there any malice at all from João Gomez? No. But that doesn't matter. If in the eye of the referee and the VAR, they deem that it's serious foul play and his endangered opponent, then it's going to be a red card. And bearing in mind that Calvert-Lewin was sent off last night, this one will not be overturned, you would imagine. Well, it's a sad end to the evening for Christian Norgard. He is being helped off by two members of the Brentford medical team. He can't put any weight on that right ankle. Brentford, who are already missing a number of key players, could have done without that. Vitaly Janel, as a result of it, is on far sooner than he'd have expected, but no VAR intervention. And this, Dean Ashton, changes the whole dynamic of the evening because Wolverhampton Wanderers are going to have to play 80 minutes with 10 men. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be a huge task for them. Now, to get through this game, they've obviously gone, kept that back five. They've now just got three in front with Sarabia going slightly deeper and Cunha is just alone striker on his own up there but I just always think when the referee takes that long to actually make a decision he's and not he may, convinced and he may well and also he maybe looks at the player and whether he's you know genuinely injured which he was does that affect the decision should that affect the decision you wonder if uh, you know, so, sometimes you can make a challenge and just be very very unlucky in the way that in the manner that you catch a player that they get injured it doesn't mean that you nastily forcefully go in with your studs high maybe the best example of that was it maybe even the season before last do you remember the challenge between uh, Son and Andre Gomez at Goodison Park Andre Gomez suffered a serious injury Son was sent off I'm pretty sure that red card was later rescinded wasn't it well and that, that is the issue obviously from a referee's point of view and if the players are surrounding and there's a clear injury very very difficult for a referee not to show a red card as we welcome listeners from Talk Sport, we've had quite a dramatic opening to this game. It's still Brentford nil, Wolves nil, but Wolverhampton Wanderers already are down to 10 men. Jao Gomez shown a straight red card for a challenge that left Christian Norgard having to be helped off the pitch by two physios. But Dean Ashton, we're not entirely convinced that it was a red card offence. Well, I think it's difficult. Jao Gomez has gone to step in to try and win the ball. His foot's very, very low. It's not particularly high. His studs aren't showing. It's not in an aggressive manner. It's not very forceful. But he does catch the Achilles of Norgard, who clearly is injured. The referee took his time, made the decision, gave the red card, and it's not going to be overturned, especially if you look at Calvert-Lewin's red from last night. Well, then clearly if a player has been injured by being stood on the Achilles... It's going to be a red. Wolves had had the best chance at that point. Mateus Cunha, after the ball was passed straight to him by Strakusha. 
in the Brentford goal. Hit his shot straight at the keeper. And as Brentford come forward, Wolves with the 10 men trying to clear their lines. And it remains here. Brentford nil, Wolves nil. Jan Elt laying the ball into Mope. Chance to get a shot away from the edge of the area. And it's tipped over the crossbar. I think it was Nathan Collins, of all people, against his old club. Well, there, adamant it should have been a corner, I have to say. I think Jose Sarr saves this, Dean Ashton. Well, it looked as if there was a touch, that's for sure. They worked it well wide into Damsgaard, a little reverse pass, played into Mope, who could easily have turned himself and had a shot very unselfish. Just laid to the edge of the box for Collins to take the strike on. He's gone for the curler, wasn't the best effort, pretty straight, and the referee felt that Sarr didn't get a touch when he clearly did. Goal kick for Wolves, 0-0, here on Talk Sport 2, in this all-Premier League FA Cup third-round encounter. But you would imagine that with the 10 men, Wolves are going to have to soak up a fair amount of pressure, and well, that doesn't help. Santiago Bueno, the Uruguayan, slicing his clearance straight into touch, and Brentford have a throw deep inside the visitors' half of the field away to our right. Well, it's not going to change necessarily the defensive line a huge amount, because Bellegarde can sit into midfield happily, to do that, Sarabia will help out. It's just whether one of those centre-backs for Brentford does get given the licence to go and join the attack or when it's wide, do they get in the box? I think the offside flag was up there as uh, Brentford were coming forward. Keen Lewis Potter on that left-hand side. Incidentally, Mikael Damsgaard started a game as the, the other wing back. There's quite a lot of versatility in this Brentford lineup. I guess when you're suffering with injuries and absentees due to the two international tournaments taking place over the next few weeks. That versatility comes in handy for Thomas Frank. He's a player, Damsgaard, that when Brentford signed him, I thought that's a, a really good signing. When I've watched him for Denmark, he's been an outstanding player. You remember his goal against, against England. But he's not really hit the levels that I expected yet here at, at Brentford for a player that's as talented as he is. Brentford nil, Wolves nil. But he's coming forward again, but... Wolverhampton Wanderers defending manfully. It's pretty much a, a rigid back five now, camped on the edge of their own penalty area, but they've got an awful lot of time to defend. Here is Damsgaard into the box, looking for Mope in the centre. A couple of scuffed clearances away, and Collins, who's been booed by the Wolves fans, picks it up 20 yards from goal. Zanka out to this right-hand side, and De Silva, who cuts in his left foot and scoots away from the challenge of Bellegarde. He keeps possession well. He's back out to Zanka on this right-hand side, and... As you would expect, they've got a man over every time here. Following that, Jao Gomez, red card. Jan Elk, the substitute. Finding Damsgaard on the edge of the area. Here's Roroslev. And Zanka with the opportunity to cross. Jensen had made a good run to the near post. The cross was towards Mope, but well shielded by Kilman. Gary Anil frantically urging his Wolves players to get higher up the pitch. Dean Ashton doesn't want them sitting too deep. No, because what Brentford are very good at is working that ball into a crossing position and then overloading the box when midfielders make the run, which they're going to be able to freely do because of that extra player. Here's De Silva looking for Mope again. It's cleared away this time by Bueno. Wolves could do with a period of the game where they're keeping possession. And actually, Semedo bursting forward has picked out Cunha on the right-hand side. Sarabia ahead of him. Cunha keeps going. Road runner that he is. The ball deflects behind off a Brentford defender, and he's done really well there, Matthias Cunha, to get his side up the pitch, as you said he's capable of doing, and winning Wolves their second corner. Yeah, he's going to be a vital player in this game, isn't he? And what I would say to him is, don't even really come into a defensive position. You stand right on the last defender. So when that ball is cleared, because of his pace, he could cause real problems for Brentford with Wolves counter-attacking with just one ball over the top. 18 minutes gone, Brentford nil, Wolves nil, corner for the visitors. It's about to be swung in from that right-hand side towards the far post it goes. It's knotted down inside the area by Kilman. Trying to keep it alive here, Kilman. In the end, it's smuggled behind and it will be another corner, will it? In fact, the assistant referee has decided there was a Wolves player in an offside position and it will be a free kick for Brentford inside their own box. That wasn't a bad set-piece routine, was it? Not at all. They obviously congregated near the near post, played it to the far post for Kilman to head it back. It just didn't fall right for him on the second attempt. Here's Keen Lewis Potter at the other end. Looking for Mope again. Kilman imperiously. The Wolves captain wins it back for his team. And then it's launched upfield by Nelson Semedo. Asking 
the ever willing Cunha to chase it, but of course but he wasn't comes it, Ethan Pinnock and, and heads it clear. And he wasn't in the right position there. He was five yards off Pinnock. So when that ball goes over his head, he's not then gonna he's not gonna win that. He's giving Pinnock five yards head start. Mad for Oroslev, away from Doherty, makes his way towards the edge of the penalty area of Oroslev. He's got Jensen to his left. Jensen shifts the ball onto his right foot, ten yards outside the box, drills it to his near side and De Silva. Red and white jerseys queuing up in the centre. De Silva taking on Doherty. Doherty slides in and prods the ball behind for Brentford's first corner of the evening. 0 0. Made a really positive start. Just De Silva back in the side. Injured since August on this right hand side. Just looking to beat Doherty for pace, which he did do. But the uh, defender did really well just to poke a, a toe out, flick that behind. Well, Matthias Jensen. He is so dangerous from these set pieces. He is about to take the corner. Sean Derry, the Wolves assistant manager out in front of us, trying to organise his team into their defensive shape. Rorislev from the short corner goes deep to the far post and oh, he's kept in play by Pinnock. And in the end, the goalkeeper, Jose Saar, has to claw the ball into his gloves almost from underneath his own crossbar. It looked for all the world, Dean Ashton, as if that one was sailing deep and into the crowd. Well, I, I thought that was out, and I just wonder whether the officials haven't done anything because Saar just got hold of that and patted it down. The Wolves are playing a risky game here, trying to play their way out from the back. In the end, Doyle, the youngster, goes long, and it's over the head of his manager, Gary O'Neill, and out for a Brentford throw. Gary O'Neill still chirping away in the ear of the fourth official. Keith Stroud... It'll be fascinating to see what he has to say about that red card for Jao Gomez with only 10 minutes on the clock. Wolves down to 10 men, but at the moment they are keeping Brentford at bay. 0 0 the score. You're listening to Talk Sport 2 on this Friday evening, FA Cup third round weekend. So many live commentaries on the network. We started last night with that ball draw Crystal Palace against Everton. Those two will have to do it all again. As I've mentioned a couple of times already, Spurs about to get underway against Burnley over on TalkSport. Here's De Silva towards the Wolves penalty area. Collins well forward, just knocks it a few yards ahead of him to Jensen. Mope coming outside the box to pick up possession. And then it's dinked towards the far post and headed down by Damsgaard. Totti was in the right time to clear, but didn't get much distance on that clearance. Back into the box towards Mope with his back to goal. Squeezes the ball out to the left-hand side and Lewis Potter. And it was Samedo in the end who came across and knocks the ball out for a Brentford throw. When that ball is wide for Brentford, though, the ball in has to be perfect. They're physically so much weaker than the Wolves' defence. Kilman, Bueno and Totti just bullying Mope. Lewis Potter when he gets in there and also Jensen are just physically not strong enough to win anything unless the ball is absolutely perfect. Maybe they have to work it even harder to the byline and cut it back. Here's De Silva, great for Brentford to have him back fully fit and back in the starting lineup. Can't get on the end of the ball from Damsgaard, but Damsgaard keeps it alive inside that penalty area and then pirouettes away from Doherty, out to the right and Rorosev. Low cross all the way across the six-yard line, came to Jensen at the far post, his shot blocked by Semedo. That was a really teasing ball from Mads Rorosev. And that's the type of ball that they need, is that one that's flashed across the six-yard box, low, skidding off the surface, difficult to defend against. And in the end, actually, it was Semedo with a brilliant block, wasn't it? Second Brentford corner of the evening, nil-nil. And we've reached the midway point of the first half here on Talk Sport. Referee just delaying the kick being taken. Not entirely sure why. And now, belatedly, he has blown his whistle. And Jensen will deliver, but he takes it short over on that far side. Lewis Potter with a dangerous ball in. Good header away by Doherty on the edge of the six-yard box and picked up by De Silva in midfield who'll go all the way back for Strakosha, the goalkeeper. Well, once again, everybody in this stadium, including us, had absolutely no idea what that check was for. Well, it so didn't it... even come up on the television monitor, did it? No, it didn't, no. no it just... Not, not working not, as it should, VAR. Not, well, well, and also, that's not fair on the supporters that are here and paid good money to be here. Here's Mope buzzing away at the... 
front of that bees attack, leading the press. And in the end, they win a throw on the far side. There's a Wolves player down, so the referee is delaying the throw being taken quickly. Looked like a little bit of afters there. Yeah, Tommy Doyle going over there with a decent tackle to start with. Then he's gone in and then he has. Oh, was there a stamp from there from Damsgaard? Is that worth a second look on VAR? Of course it is. Well, if there is a check, it's over pretty quickly. I mean, Tommy Doyle's got himself up and he's back in into position. <laughs> I promise you, I can't really see what the big difference is in those, in those two challenges. I really can't. And that's the thing that Gary O'Neill, I'm sure, already will be looking at. Well, they've been on the end of more than their fair share of refereeing controversy. Wolves over the course of the season, I think Gary O'Neill will feel decisions certainly haven't gone their way in these first 25 minutes. Gomez shown a straight red card that perplexed many of us inside the stadium. And I think Damsgaard's a lucky boy. As it is, it remains nil-nil. But it, it, it's, it isn't any different. Again, he's gone to get the ball, he's stepped across, he's stood right on the ankle of Tommy Doyle. Now, is it because Tommy Doyle isn't injured and having to leave the pitch? That, that, should, that shouldn't be and, the and barometer, it, and, and, though, no, should no, it? It shouldn't, of course it shouldn't. That's Dean Ashton, former FA Cup finalist with West Ham back in the day. Here's De Silva, right corner of the penalty area, out to Rorislev, who's been lively on this near side as we look. And now Zanka, patiently here, Brentford trying to pick their way through the ten men of Wolverhampton Wanderers. Still goalless on TalkSport 2. Keen Lewis Potter picks up possession over on the far side, drills the ball into the near post, and it's a Superman punch away by Saar. Cam Wolves counter here. Doyle with the ball out to this left-hand side, asking Bellegarde to chase, but the ball is out for a throw, and there's a very heated exchange going on between Thomas Frank, the Brentford manager, and his Wolves counterpart, Gary O'Neill. Dean Ashton, what do you make of that? It's interesting, well, there's a little sort of high-five from the two after they've discussed the matters, I'm sure. I think when you look at both the characters of the two managers, I don't think there wouldn't have been anything overboard, but I'm pretty sure Gary O'Neill would be saying, well, look, you know, there wasn't any difference really in the, in the challenge. But at the same time, he's the type of character that would have hated to see a player injured. De Silva finds Jensen on the edge of the area. Jensen goes down under a challenge from Belagar, but no free kick, says the referee. And then Cunha's caught as he looks to go away on the counter. And again, there's a little altercation off the ball. Zanka involved this time. I think Cunha was frustrated that the potential counter attack was stopped in its tracks. A yellow card has been shown. I think it was Damsgaard, was it, who made the challenge? Quite a cynical one. Again, difficult to know because there was three or four players around Cunha. He's so good at that, though, isn't he? Travelling with the ball. He's almost as quick with it as he is without yeah, it. I it think it is Damsgaard that just caught him. It was Zanka, though, that then got involved. I think the yellow card has gone the way of Mikhail Damsgaard. First Brentford bookie of the evening. 0-0 the score in driving rain now in West London. And it will be Jose Sarr, the Wolves goalkeeper, all in yellow tonight, who takes this free kick and launches it out to the left-hand side. And he's chested down by Doherty. He got a bit lucky there, Doherty, because the ball cannon off Cunha. But the flag was up on the far side anyway, and Brentford have a free kick in their right-back position. And now Thomas Frank is getting very animated. Considering not much has happened, <laughs> there's been quite a lot to talk about, <laughs> bizarrely. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, 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 by way of chances, because, because it's really just the because this, Cunha shot, isn't it? Well, because this game has got VAR, that's why. Whenever there is a game with VAR, we know that there can be controversies. I'll tell you what, it's absolutely torrential now, the rainfall in and around the GTEC Community Stadium. Here's Cunha, who has started well for Wolves in this opening 28 minutes. And he tries to chip it forward, looking for Sarabia, the goalkeeper, Strakosha, at a good starting position, comes out to the edge of the area and collects safely enough. And that was so much better, though, from Wolves. They actually played that out to Cunha. When they do have the ball, they cannot just whack it. They have to try and find at least that first pass into a Wolves' feet and then look to play off. If they just whack it, I think the uh, the Brentford centre-backs will, will mop up pretty easily. Here's Zanka, Thomas Frank asking for more from his side. Brentford on this long losing run. Big opportunity against the 10 men to end that and book their place in round four. They were beaten at this stage last season. Live on TalkSport 2 by West Ham in a London derby. 
Keen Lewis Potter, left corner of the penalty area into Collins, who still being cheered by those travelling Wolves fans. Nathan Collins, the Molyneux old boy. Now Jensen in the Alice band. Five yards outside the penalty area, gives it back to Keen Lewis Potter. Have to say, Wolves have defended really well in the 20 minutes that have elapsed since they went down to 10 men with that early red card for João Gomez. I mean, they are so deep. Here's Roslev. I mean, there is literally 10 yards between Cunha and the centre-backs. That's how tight-knit they are at the moment. Jensen now, five yards outside the penalty area, drills the ball in low to Damsgaard, out to Lewis Potter on the left-hand side, deep delivery towards De Silva, nods it goalwards, but he was being well marshalled by a couple of Wolves defenders, couldn't really generate any pace on the header, and it's a comfortable pick-up for Jose Sarr. Again, anything floated in, I think Wolves deal with. They're happy with that. In fact, they want Brentford to play those floaty crosses in because they'll deal with them. It's the whipped ones that they might struggle with, especially if you overload the box with Brentford attackers. That's when it might be difficult. Well, we've got plenty of FA Cup third round action coming your way tomorrow on Talk Sport and here on Talk Sport 2. Sunderland against Newcastle, eagerly anticipated from the Stadium of Light. That is a 12.45 kickoff on Talk Sport from 2.30. Adrian Durham will be taking you around the grounds with the goals as they go in from the FA Cup, the EFL and beyond here on Talk Sport 2. We have live commentary of Stoke against Brighton from the FA Cup at 5.30 on Talk Sport 2. Chelsea host Preston and two more commentaries on Sunday as well. Two o'clock on Talk Sport. Manchester City are up against Huddersfield as the holders get their defence underway. And at 4.30, this is live and exclusive to national radio, Arsenal against Liverpool over on Talk Sport Monday night. We round off third round weekend with Wigan against Manchester United in the FA Cup. That's an 8.15 kickoff on Talk Sport. They can't stop winning Manchester United. That'll be routine, I'm sure. 31 minutes gone here, it's... Brentford nil, 10-man Wolves nil. Doyle in possession for the visitors. Pokes the ball out to the left-hand side for Totti. The Wolves fans behind the goal, urging their team forward. Doherty in the pink footwear, back to Totti. And for once, it's Brentford who have everybody in red and white back behind the ball. I think Thomas Frank will be a bit disappointed they haven't made more so far of the numerical advantage in terms of clear goal-scoring chances. Well, the fact that... Jose Sarr hasn't had to make a save yet, I think says everything about, first of all, how well Wolves are defended with 10 players, but you're right, have Brentford really moved it quick enough? Have they overloaded the box enough? Have they tried to get it down to the byline and cut that ball back? Probably the best ball of the game was Rusleff whipping that in behind the uh, the centre-backs. They haven't done that enough. Is that a sign of a, a lack of confidence given the poor run they're on coming into this game? Well, and also... You know, they haven't got the players on the pitch right now that will win a header in the box from a half-decent cross. It has to be perfect for a Mope or a Damsgaard to get on the end of it. And that's the big issue. It's very difficult to do that. Here's De Silva running at Doherty, coming in field. Janel, the substitute, pod, prods it forward again to De Silva. He's got room to turn on the edge of the area. Can he shift it onto his left foot? De Silva plays it into the area. Jensen linking up with Mope. His shot's blocked. Then Jensen on the follow-up has made a complete hash of it and slices the left foot effort wide. They did almost pick their way through. Yeah, but once was... again, the end product was lacking. And it came from Josh De Silva again. Lovely little swivel. Jinked as if he was going to hit it with his left and then lovely clever pass into Jensen. First time to Mope, who's bang on the penalty spot. He takes a decent first touch, Mope, but he was crowded out so quickly. Kilman and Bueno just blocking the shot. He then fell to Jensen. It was a wild, wild swipe. He's not in control. He wasn't balanced with his left foot and just slices it horribly wide. It's a big chance. Wolverhampton Wanderers four times. FA Cup winners most recently in 1960. They were semi-finalists a few seasons ago under Nuno Espirito Santo, 2-0 up in the semi-final at Wembley, lost 3-2 to Watford in what turned out to be a painful afternoon for their supporters. Bearing in mind they're relatively safe in mid-table in the Premier League, and Gary O'Neill will be hoping for another prolonged run. Of course, 
Those hopes severely dented by the 10th minute sending off of Xiao Gomez for a challenge on Christian Norgard in this game. He'll be pretty pleased though, won't he? O'Neill will be talking about Thomas Frank frustrated. I think Gary O'Neill will have enjoyed the endeavours of his team, certainly from a defensive point of view. He'll be incredibly pleased. You know, he knows it's going to be difficult. You know, it's the sort of time of the season where you almost want to give players a rest. Well, actually, it's going to be a, a proper physical shift that his players are going to have to put in. And, of course, he'll be thinking, especially probably once he gets in at half-time and, and looks at the two challenges, both from Gomez and from Damsgaard, he'll be saying, well, once again, we've come off second in terms of decisions. Yeah, because we've just seen a, another couple of replays of that incident and Dean Ashton bang on as always. There's very little to choose between the two challenges. One results in a straight red card, the other, well, seemingly not even a VAR review. And that's the inconsistency that managers up and down the Premier League have complained about all season long. What's, what's unbelievable is it's not even as if there was a check, you know, like a, a go and look at it. Yeah. Here's Cunha, trying to slalom his way in between the three Brentford centre-backs, but they usher it back to their goalkeeper, Strakosia, and he fires it into the sodden skyline above the GTEC Community Stadium. A very chilly evening now as well. Nil-nil the score on TalkSport 2. We've got ten minutes to play until half-time. And it's back with Doyle inside the centre circle for Wolves. Better, though, from Wolves. Actually trying to play rather than just whacking that forwards. Bellegarde into Cunha. Cunha holds it up neatly with Pinnock up his backside. Sarabia goes down that right touchline to Nelson Semedo. Good spell this from Wolves, just keeping possession, keeping Brentford pinned back inside their own territory. They haven't been able to do that too often over these opening 36 minutes. Here's Totti now. The Portuguese finds Doherty. Doherty back to Totti. And they'll build again here. With Bueno at the heart of that three-man back line, Wolves, and he's played a good ball forward as well. Clever run from Sarabia, picks up possession, plays it forward to Cunha. Semedo has stayed upfield, and an opportunity maybe for Wolves to get across into the area here. Cunha and Doherty, the two players in the box, but again they go back towards the halfway line and Kilman. Kilman rolls it forward to Bellegarde or Semedo, rather, on that right-hand side. Now Doyle in midfield for Wolves. They've kept the ball here for quite a prolonged period. Cunha dropping deep to the halfway line, back to Totti. I mean, now that... Doherty on this near side. He <laughs> runs into the challenge of Roroslev, and the referee has decided that was a deliberate obstruction. And Mads Roroslev picks up a yellow card. Well, I think it was, but <laughs> there's not a lot he could do there, Roroslev. That ball was played inside, and then Doherty cleverly I guess just ran straight into him and he didn't do a lot to be honest they were playing the ball around with a fair degree of confidence there though Wolves well it surprised me that they weren't being pressed with a bit more intensity considering you've got that extra player and if you're a, a Brentford player really you should be winning that winning that back pretty comfortably and pretty quickly they just allowed Wolves to gain a bit of confidence and Cunha in particular a couple of times on the ball just looks a class above doesn't he Eight minutes to go until half-time. Brentford nil, Wolves nil. Can't believe all your gadgets, by the way. You have to take your gloves off just to use your iPad pencil. What's going on there? <laughs> Free kick into the penalty area and headed over by Totti. Made a brilliant run towards the far post and met the ball around about eight yards out. And it sounds over the head of Strakosha in the Brentford goal and in the end over the crossbar as well. But that was a chance, Dean. I mean, how was he not picked up? He actually made a, a run from deep. He wasn't actually being marked at the time. He then spun round the back. Obviously something they'd worked on. Deep ball in, completely free header. Nobody near him, can take his time. He's got to head it down. Of course he has, slippery surface with it raining. No, over the bar. That's just unacceptable at this level. You have to head it down and make the goalkeeper make a very, very decent save. Nonetheless though, Wolverhampton Wanderers with 10 men have created the two best chances. Cunha denied by the save from Strakosha early on and now Totti not able to make the most of that header from the free kick. Here come Brentford at the other end but Cunha nipping in to win it back for Wolves. They can't keep it for very long. De Silva right in the centre of the Wolves half. Plays it back to Zanka and here's an opportunity for Damsgaard to come infield. Tries to clip the ball forward. It's headed away by Santiago Bueno. 
And then Jensen fizzes the pass out to this near side and Brora slipped to Silva. Wriggling away from Totti, edge of the area, left footed shot towards the bottom corner. Good save by Saar, watched it all the way, dived to his right hand side and managed to parry it clear. Yeah, that's his, uh, that's his party piece, isn't it? De Silva cutting in on his left foot, curling that into the far corner. And he got it right, he made sure he used the surface to his advantage, skipped that along, zipped it along, and Saar had to do well to parry, and he parried it very, very well away from the danger. Is that their first meaningful shot on target, Brentford? It is. Six minutes to go until half-time. Nil-nil, Wolves down to ten men. Since as early as the tenth minute, Jao Gomez shown a straight red card in somewhat controversial circumstances, we feel. Here's Jensen, over on the left-hand side. Oh, that looks... I was going to say, it looked a bad tackle. They were claiming it was a dive behind the goal. The referee belatedly has awarded the free kick. I certainly think... Jensen made the most of it as the challenge came in from Sarabia. Does he need to do the little jump over him? No, look, it is a foul. Sarabia has dived in and caught him. But as so often we see, the attacker stepping across, in knowing they're going to get challenged, knowing they're going to take a whack, and then he's jumped over the top quite theatrically. It is a free kick. But he was trying, in my view, to make sure the Wolves player got a booking as well. Referee didn't fall for that and it is just the free kick but in a very dangerous position here two yards outside the penalty area level with the penalty spot on that left hand side Jensen stands over the ball he might just roll this to the edge of the box where Rorislev has got quite a bit of space to address it there are plenty of red and white jerseys inside the six yard box as well and he's fired it in there Jensen and it comes from Mopé and Brentford lead Neil Mopé fires in from six yards out it was a wicked delivery from Jensen's free kick. The Wolves defence never looked comfortable in dealing with. And Neil Mopé scores his third goal of the season to lift some of the gloom around the GTEC. It is Brentford 1, Wolves 0. Oh, and if there's a player that needed a goal, it's him, Neil Mopé. He's not had his scoring boots on for a couple of seasons now. But he comes alive in the box and he just waited. He didn't get involved in all the the big brutes that were going for the header. He just waited. He just surveyed the area and thought, where's this going to land? It landed right at his feet. He took his time. There was so many Wolves players in front of him, but he just spotted a little gap with his left foot, arced it in with the outside of his left foot into the far corner, flashed it past all the players and the goalkeeper for Brentford 1-0. It's a classy finish from Mopé. Emphatic from the Frenchman, 1-0 to the referee seeing the Wolverhampton Wanderers fans but Brentford have the breakthrough goal and you have to say Dean Ashton with the 10 men, it looks a difficult task now for Wolves. Well it's not like they've created many clear cut chances but I have to say considering maybe the lack of confidence for Mope he took that brilliantly and he took his time he didn't rush it, he just waited for it to be at the perfect height for that left foot to be pulled back and strike and caught it lovely into that far corner. And you're right, it's going to be difficult for Wolves. Of course, they've got to be patient. They can't just think, right, we're going to go forward and get an equaliser. It's still probably going to be a counter-attack. Ball play forward towards De Silva. I think it's a bit frustrated. He allowed it to skip under his studs and is collected by Jose Sarr on the edge of the area. Brentford in front here, three minutes to go until half-time. You're listening to Talk Sport 2. Fulham have taken the lead against Rotherham. Bobby Deckel over Reed with a fine finish and they're about to kick off over on Talk Sport Tottenham against Burnley at the uh, third of four all Premier League ties this weekend all four of them live on the Talk Sport network we started with uh, Palace nil Everton nil last night Brentford leading Wolves 1-0 here Spurs Burnley about to get underway and on Sunday live and exclusive to National Radio Arsenal against Liverpool as two of the title chasers go head to head in the FA Cup Evoking memories that Michael Owen final in Cardiff from a few years ago, that fixture. Here's Pinnock for Brentford. Thomas it, Frank's men in such need of a victory. Well, they are, and, and they'll be after that second goal. They'll want a cushion, that's for sure. Because they know that Wolves will pose a threat with Cunha and Bellegarde on the break, Sarabia. And here's De Silva making his way into the penalty area. The pass is too heavy for Damsgaard. And De Silva kicks out in frustration with himself. It's going to be a goal kick for Wolves. 
Yeah, I've been impressed with him, considering he's missed a lot of football. De Silva, he's been the brightest player. He's been the most creative. Well, they need all the help they can get, Brentford, in the Premier League, hovering dangerously close to the bottom three now. Following this run of seven defeats in eight games. Well, they lead here by a goal to nil in the FA Cup. And they don't play in the Premier League again until January the 20th when Nottingham Forest are the visitors. Then they go to Spurs. 24 hours before transfer deadline day. These two meet again actually in the Premier League in mid-February. You would expect when they get players back, Ivan Tony, the big one of course, that... They should, Dean Ashton, have too much quality to get seriously embroiled in the relegation scrap. Well, it's going to be fascinating, isn't it, to see just where Ivan Tony's at, you know, what he has done sort of behind closed doors in terms of training, in terms of matches. Is he absolutely ready and sharp when he comes back? You'd expect him to start, wouldn't you? And that when the Premier League starts again against Nottingham Forest into the last 20 seconds of the first half here on Talk Sport 2. Brentford 1, 10 man Wolves nil. Collins driving to the edge of the area. Lays the ball off to Keen Lewis Potter on the far side. It's back with Damsgaard now and De Silva on the edge of the box, twisting one way and then the other. He goes down, asking for a penalty. He's absolutely adamant that he was swept off his feet. The referee at the moment is not interested and Matthias Cunha has Rob Zanker on this near side. Not got too many Wolves players up in support as we move into four added minutes at the end of the first half. In the end, Cunha goes down just by sheer weight of numbers, I think, forcing him off the ball and Brentford have it back now with Jan Elt. Yeah, but it takes two of them to stop him. He just seems to glide along, Cunha. But De Silva felt that was a penalty. I thought he went down a little bit easy as if the ball had just stretched away from him. And then he was trying to win the penalty rather than it genuinely being a contact to force him to the floor. Adrian Darren correcting me, by the way, pointing out that Michael Owen final was 23 years ago. Time flies when you're having fun. Here's De Silva. We've played one of the four added minutes. It's Brentford 1, Wolves 0. That did look like a foul on Mopo. Again, theatrically goes to ground and he's being... Most of his feet by Sarabia, but he's going to have to be careful, Pablo Sarabia, because he has given away a couple of fouls now. And this is a free kick, Dean Ashton, within shooting range for Brentford. Yeah, I mean, he just sticks the leg out, doesn't he? And Mope says, thank you very much. I'll get a nice touch on that leg and over I'll go. But this is going to happen, isn't it? When you've got a player less, you tend, with when, as you get tired and fatigued and, you know, you... You tend to dive in and you're desperately trying to help your side defensively. You are going to give free kicks away. So nervous moments for the 10 man of Wolves in stoppage time at the end of the first half. There are a cluster of four or five Brentford players still over the ball. I think it will be Matthias Jensen looking for potentially his fifth goal of the season. There's a bit of a pantomime act going on between De Silva and Janel. De Silva just pushing Janel as he shields the ball from the Wolverhampton Wanderers players, three of them in a wall just inside the D on the edge of the box. It's Jensen who chips it into the air in the end and it's blocked by Cunha. And quite an elaborate routine, comes to nothing. Here's Jensen again though, diagonal ball into the area. Nodded on by Zanka at the far post who stayed forward. Mope chests it down to the edge of the area and Keen Lewis Potter on the half volley. It's wide and it will be a goal kick for Wolves with Brentford leading by a goal to nil. And only about 90 seconds of stoppage time to play. Dean Ashton. Yeah, I was like, I like that thinking from Lewis Potter because it was chested back to him from Mope. And rather than a difficult height, he just lifted it for himself to then try and volley it at a more comfortable height. Just dragged it wide as Wolves defenders jumped in front of him. It'll be interesting to see if Gary O'Neill or any of his backroom staff gravitate towards the referee, Tony Harrington at the half-time whistle following that very early red card for Joe Gomez for the challenge that saw Christian Norgard hobble off with what looked like a nasty ankle injury. Meanwhile, Wolves have a throw-in in the last minute of the first half. The last of four added on. In fact, the throw-in is Brentford's, but they weren't in any particular hurry to take it. That's why Mateusz Cunha came across to get the ball back. And it's going to be 
Brentford in possession, midway inside their own half, with Jan Elton just playing out time, really, Dean. Yeah, as they should do. I think Gary O'Neill probably won't have that much difference that he can make, is it? It's, you know, his team's going to have to sit and defend. They're going to have to hope they can produce something on the counter-attack. You know, he, he'll have had in his mind maybe changes that he wanted to make. How much time is he maybe going to give Neto? Kaladzic, you know, is he going to play with rumours of him leaving? He would have liked, I'm sure, to have given some young players maybe some game time, and he's probably not going to be able to now with the situation of the game. Well, there's the half-time whistle. The boos that you can hear are from the travelling 2,500 Wolverhampton Wanderers fans. This game really changed in its complexion. In the 10th minute, Xiao Gomez shown a straight red card following a challenge on Christian Norgard that saw the Brentford midfielder having to be helped off the pitch with an ankle injury. Brentford took a while to make their numerical advantage count, but make it count they did. Neil Mope thundering in his third goal of the season after Wolves had failed to deal with a free kick from Jensen. I think overall, Dean Ashton, Brentford clearly have been the set better side, but how much has that been influenced by the red card? It just changes the game totally, doesn't it? It becomes um, attack v defence, and Wolves have done what they felt they needed to do and defended very, very well, you'd have to say. Um, but with just that one tiny bit of luck in the way that it fell for Mope, but I've got to say, he took it very, very well, considering that lack of confidence I'm sure he's got. He just took his time, he didn't rush it, brilliant strike. And ultimately, when you've got that extra man, it's very, very difficult to defend your box. When you when it ricochets out, how can you cover every single spot? Well, Wolverhampton Wanderers crashed out at the third round stage after a replay defeat to Liverpool last season. They haven't lost back-to-back -back third round FA Cup ties in half a century. They've got it all to do to avoid that happening in the second half. Half-time here at the GTEC. It is Brentford 1, 10-man Wolves nil. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League. The Emirates FA Cup live on TalkSport 2 with Carling. The official beer partner of the Emirates FA Cup and Adobe Women's FA Cup. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. Washing, dishes, vacuuming, household chores never end. Even for me, Albert Einstein. But you know what? I leave it all till later because I've got a smart meter. And right now I'm part of a scheme where I get rewarded for changing when I use my energy. More than a million others took part last winter using less energy at peak times. <laughs> Good, eh? <laughs> get ready to start earning rewards. Search Get a Smart Meter today. Eligibility and availability vary. Consumer action required. Reward schemes available to selected customers. Today at Centre Parks, I didn't multitask. I saw the gleeful look on my teenager's face as she conquered the zip wire. Today, I didn't juggle meetings and pack lunches. I helped my little boy paint a cute squirrel pot. Today, I didn't stress about a work deadline. I swam underwater aquajetting with my 10-year-old. Life moves too fast. Precious moments last longer at Centre Parks. Cherish every moment. Think January is bad in the UK? Here in Sweden, we get four hours of daylight and temperatures of minus 17. That's why, in January, we make things a little easier. So when you choose a Volvo XC40, you get a £4,000 contribution plus 0% APR. Pretty sure I remembered everything. Anna, could you let me in? It's freezing out here. Ah, nearly everything. Order online or visit a Volvo retailer today. 50% minimum deposit, £4,000 contributed by Volvo. Finance provided by Volvo Car Financial Services UK Limited. Figure based on XC40 mild hybrid and varies by model. Terms apply. <gasps> Supermarket Shoppers of Britain. It's Lidl's pick of the week. Super save up to 30% on selected fruit and veg. Like British curly kale, only 59p. Six golden delicious apples for 99p. And a ready-to-eat avocado, just 49p. Plus more epic savings in store now. Now that's big on quality and always Lidl on price. Subject to availability, selected stores GB only. Cammy, can you believe the how? Howden's Game Changer programme is back. It's unbelievable, Jill. Howden's has given more grassroots football clubs a chance to receive a free kitchen. And you could be part of it. So if you want to give your local club a boost, go to howden's.com and search Game Changer now. Get in there. The Howden's Game Changer programme, transforming kitchens for clubs and communities. Applications close 31st of January. See eligibility criteria and full details at howden's.com. This game on coming this summer. 
Hear unrivaled coverage of UEFA Euro 2024 live on TalkSport and TalkSport 2. Unbelievable. The biggest football tournament in Europe, driven by the passion and prowess of the world's biggest sports radio station. Oh! Broadcasting unmissable output, 24 hours a day, seven days a week throughout the entire tournament. What a magnificent finish! You wait for Euro 2024 Germany, coming soon to TalkSport and TalkSport 2. The unstoppable force of live football. FA Cup Live on TalkSport 2. You are listening to TalkSport 2 half-time here at the GTEC Community Stadium. Brentford leading 10-man Wolves by a goal to Neil Jao Gomez sent off early on for the visitors. Neil Mopé with his third goal of the season, putting the bees in front. We've got so much FA Cup action to look forward to over the weekend on the TalkSport network, including the small matter of the first weird time derby in eight years. Fine tingling occasion with a fixture that evokes memories. And Paolo Di Canio and his entourage swoop onto David Vaughan, who was turned in an absolute screamer. And Kevin Nolan does the chicken dance and gets a hat trick for Newcastle United. That is the past. This is now. To Bellingham and he scores. The flag doesn't go up and Sunderland hit the lead. The story of Sunderland in 2024, can our players mature and, and play more consistently at their best level? Because when they do, I think they're a joy to watch. There's always drama in football. Whoever you support, if you do, let me know. <laughs> Newcastle are out of Europe. Newcastle 1, AC Milan 2. It is a rivalry that has never lacked for spice or intrigue. And Jack Clark heads the ball into the back of the net. Setting up Longstaff, and it's only taken Newcastle four. A brilliant draw, I think it'll be a, a, a great game. This could be the story of the FA Cup third round for this season. Yes, what a tremendous occasion it should be up in the North East. 12.45 kickoff live on Talk Sports. Sunderland take on Newcastle. And if there's one man this weekend needing a win, surely it's the Newcastle boss, Eddie Howe. The Mad Pies come into this derby, having lost seven of their last eight matches. They've crashed out of Europe as well, of course. But Jeff Stelling explained on The Breakfast Show that Howe deserves more time, even if the Mad Pies lose. I think some of them will put out a strong side. You know, Michael Beale's just got through the door there and he wants to make an impression. Yeah. And as for Eddie, they've had, you know, so much football and, and people calling for his head. I know. And, you know, it's a massive game up there. I mean, I think people need to remember, this is the Eddie Howe that dragged them out of the relegation places when he came in, got them into the Champions League this season where they've been playing in that fantastic group. And, OK, they're going through a... A difficult time at the moment, but um, yeah, you know, I, I it'll leave them in a difficult position if they lose. And I think they've got they've got Man City and Villa in the next two league games oh. as well. You know, what which isn't easy, is it to say the least? So, um, yeah, I'm I'm going to sit on the fence on that one. But I hope from Eddie Howe's point of view that everything works out okay this season because he's done. He's done a fantastic job. Jeff Selling there on breakfast, reacting to Eddie Howe being under pressure heading into this big North East derby live on TalkSport tomorrow. And, of course, Jeff will be back on TalkSport breakfast next Monday and Tuesday. An absolute must listen. Dean Ashton, do you agree with what Jeff Selling had to say there, that there shouldn't be any pressure on Eddie Howe? I spoke to Nikos Dabazas, former Newcastle defender this morning for TalkSport. He was saying the same, that Eddie deserves more time to turn around this poor runner form? Look, if he didn't have the crazy in injury list um, and the fact that the player's schedule has just been absolutely incredible, and not just the schedule, but if you think of the magnitude of the games that Newcastle have had to play in this long period that they've had, if you include Euro European football and the Premier League, it's no surprise to me that they just look, you know, so fatigued. And that's where they look short. I mean... They are by far a better defensive side than they have shown in recent weeks. That doesn't, that has to be down to fatigue because there's no way your defensive side dips as much as it has done without that. And, and I think once the players are back, if then the, uh, the performances and the form is poor, then you may be questioning. Is this the worst fixture that Newcastle could have, though, that Eddie Howe could have this weekend? Because 
usually when a Premier League team plays a championship side in the FA Cup, there's an opportunity to, to rest a few players. You've mentioned fatigue. He can't rest anybody, can he, for this derby it's game? Very, it's, it's very, very difficult. You know, Sunderland are a, are a very, very good side with some really talented players. But you know what? He did do it against Manchester United away at Old Trafford. You know, he played some, you know, fringe players and they certainly produced in their performance. I, I think he has to make some changes. He has to freshen up the team somehow because they just look so out of form, you know, totally fatigued. And actually, it might do the team good to have just a few fresh faces in the team. You've watched a lot of championship football this season. What sort of threat does Sunderland pose? Well, they're very good at keeping the ball. Obviously, it's changed like with with with, uh, with Mowbray going, but in certainly Jack Clark, um, they have a wonderful, wonderful talent that's going to cause any side, whether it's Championship or Premier League, um, difficulties with the way that he, he he dribbles with the ball. But they are a very young team. You know, and this is a huge, huge game that a lot of those players will not be used to. And that's the big question, that the atmosphere is going to be absolutely incredible. And therefore, you would expect the Newcastle players, with their experience, to be able to handle that a little bit better. A reminder of that game, Sunderland against Newcastle. Match anticipated up on the North East, live on TalkSport, 12.45 kickoff at game day with all the biggest build-up to that colossal fixture. Do you see an upset in the FA Cup this weekend? I'm at Watford tomorrow. They welcome Chesterfield, flying high at the top of the National League. Chesterfield have already beaten Portsmouth. I'm sort of seeing that as a banana skin for Watford. Yeah, I think there are a, a few teams that... And you're right, because of the schedule over Christmas, there's lots of teams that will want to certainly rest players. And, and, and teams have done it in the Carabao Cup. What's really difficult to, to know is what team the manager's going to put out. Because if you're saying, you know, that you know Watford put out their strongest side, well, then you, I don't see an upset. It's when managers think, well, I have to give players rest. And you look at the starting 11 and you go, wow, what an opportunity. And you do as the underdog. You look at the, the team sheet and think, actually, there's a great chance here today. So an hour before every single kickoff, I'll be fascinated to see who gets picked and who doesn't and who's resting which players. Reminder, we've got so many live commentaries for you across the TalkSport network over the course of the weekend. They're underway uh, over on TalkSport right now, 15 minutes into the game uh, between Tottenham and Burnley, one of four all Premier League encounters. Still goalless there, uh, approaching half-time at Craven Cottage. It's Fulham 1, Rotherham 0, Bobby Deckel Dover reed with the goal for the Cottagers tomorrow, as we've been talking about there. Sunderland against Newcastle at 12.45 on Talk. Sport here on Talksport 2 at 3 o'clock. Brighton go to Stoke. Brighton semi finalists uh, last season, of course. 5 30. We've got Chelsea against Preston tomorrow, live on Talksport 2. Uh, Sunday, Man City against Huddersfield and Arsenal against Liverpool, both live on Talksport. Monday night, 8 15, we have Wigan against Manchester United. We are still waiting the return of the two teams here. At the GTEC Community Stadium, Brentford leading 10-man walls by a goal to nil. Looks like they are. The Bees going to make a change at half-time. And it's one of their youngsters, Miles Pert-Harris, who will be coming on. Also out there is uh, Josh De Silva, just getting a bit of extra uh, training at the start of the second half. Hasn't played a lot of football this season, not played at all, in fact, since August. But you were really impressed with him, De Silva, in the first half, Dean Ashton. Really, really impressed. Yeah, just playing off the right-hand side, not really in a position as such. Kept getting it on the half turn, kept dribbling at the Wolves' defence, picking the right pass, went to shoot himself. Like I said, considering he's not had a lot of football, he looked the sharpest, the freshest, um, the most inventive of that Brentford line, who obviously a lot of those players are have lost confidence because of the run that they've been on and he probably comes in fresh without that feeling and you could sense that and notice that and he'll be so pleased Thomas Frank that he's got him back Do you see Gary O'Neill going to his bench? I'm looking particularly at uh, Pedro Neto who maybe can come on and add a bit of attacking thrust Well I think it just depends how much football they want to give him. You know, I was speaking to a couple of the, the people from the Wolves media and said I was surprised Neto wasn't starting this game. I thought it would be perfect for him to have certainly a half. And they were just saying, well, yeah, they just want to really make sure with him, obviously with a, with a muscular injury, you know, you don't want to take any risks. And actually, 
with uh, with Wang being out of the side and away, he's going to be needed in the Premier League and maybe Gary O'Neill's just thinking more about the next Premier League game. Well, certainly Brentford are going to make that change. The Wolves players have come out for the second half. No obvious sign of any alterations for them. The stadium announcer just welcoming the Brentford players back out onto the pitch. Brentford leading by a goal to nil here on Talk Sport. Neil Mopé scored it four minutes before half-time. Chao Gomez sent off, having been shown a straight red card. And you've seen a replay, a couple of replays, Dean Ashton, of that challenge that at the time you, you felt maybe was contentious. But having seen the replays, you're now coming round to it being a straight red. Also, we've seen a replay now that we didn't see during the game. We've seen a replay now that I think probably VAR have looked at the slightly different angle and ultimately if you if you you know got your, your studs end up on the ankle of an opponent and it looks like it rolls the ankle that's going to probably be a red card. What I would say is there is no difference with the challenge of Damsgaard. Damsgaard is exactly the same. He steps across and steps right on his ankle. Well we are back off and underway in the second half. Brentford in there Red and white striped shirts, black shorts and black socks, shooting from right to left. Wolverhampton Wanderers all in blue, attacking the goal away to our right. No changes uh, for the visitors, as we mentioned, but Miles Pert-Harris has come on for Brentford. Making his fourth appearance of the season, played uh, five games on loan, or scored five goals, I should say, on loan at Forest Green last season. As Keen Lewis Potter... Picks up possession down by the left corner flag. And his cross is blocked by Semedo and Lewis Potter just trying to usher it behind for a corner, but Semedo stretches a long right leg and keeps it in play. And then Lewis Potter in trying to retrieve possession as foul Bella Garden. Wolves have a free kick on the edge of their own box. What will Gary O'Neill's half-time message have been? Dean Ashton? It will be to be as solid as they were defensively, um, but also can we add a little bit more when we have the ball? Can we be a little bit more progressive? Can we get Cunha on the right on the edge of being onside and offside on that back line? Because his pace, he will be too quick for that Brentford back line, but they've got to get him in the right positions. But Harris came on for Mads Roros left. That was the change that um, Thomas Frank made at half-time. Totti under pressure from the substitute, heads it Back to his goalkeeper, Saar. Yeah, slight change for, certainly for De Silva, who's now gone as a, as a sort of right wing back. So you've got two very attacking players as your wing backs, Lewis Potter on the left, De Silva on the right. And maybe it's just a case of if there was a slight issue for us left, or maybe Thomas Frank really did want to give Pert Harris an opportunity in this game and always felt that, that was going to happen. Yeah, so Brentford now with Strakosha in goal, a back three of Zanka, Pinnock and Collins to Silva. And Lewis Potter are the wing backs. Jensen, Janelt and Damsgaard across midfield. Mope and Pert Harris in attack in front of a crowd of 16,818 here this evening. Wolves unchanged. Saar the goalkeeper, Kilman, Bueno and Totti in front of him. Semedo and Doherty in the wing back positions. Doyle. Sarabia and Bellegard in midfield and Matthias Cunha is the lone striker. 1-0 Brentford lead, we've played two and a half minutes of the second half. The ball scooped forward by Lewis Potter looking for Matthias Jensen. He felt a nudge in the back from Kilman, but referee says to play on and then the flag is up for an offside anyway and Wolves have another free kick deep inside their own territory. And Pedro Neto has been sent out to warm up early in the second half. Yeah, I think it won't be that long before he's given some game time they've really missed him I mean only a couple of players in the Premier League have got more assists than Neto and considering he's been out for as long as he has been just shows what an electric start he had at the uh, at the start of the season he's one of those if he does have a strong second half of the season you could see one of the big clubs I know Arsenal or Amira's maybe coming in in the summer Gary O'Neill admitting in the build-up to this game, that Wolves still treading very carefully when it comes to the Premier League profit and sustainability rules. Doesn't expect to have too much money to spend. We know that Sasa Kalajic, who broke that story on TalkSport earlier, is likely to join Frankfurt in the Bundesliga on loan, assuming that Wolves can sign a replacement. Kalajic is on the bench tonight, but you wouldn't necessarily expect him to come on and risk that move. Wolves coming forward here, though, and the ball scooped over the top by Sarabia. Right in front of Strakosha, 
And you have to say that is a big opportunity for Wolverhampton Wanderers to get themselves on level terms. It came from a throw on the far side. The Brentford defence switched off momentarily. Doherty with a low ball to the near post. And Sarabia maybe just overthought the finish, Dean Ashton, tried to lift it over the goalkeeper from point-blank range. And in the end, he chips it well wide. Oh, it's brilliant from Doherty, though. Really bright play, quick throw in. Brentford come forward, though. And here's Jensen, rolls it out to De Silva in the right-wing position. De Silva running at Doherty into the penalty area, laying it off to Damsgaard, who shoots... And it's straight into the arms of the goalkeeper, Saar. 1-0 yeah, Brentford lead. Yeah, good play again from De Silva. And picking the pass when it's perfect, Doyle came out to, to help his full-back out. And as soon as Doyle went out, then the pass was made by De Silva, giving Damsgaard enough time just to get out of his feet and have the strike. But it was right at Saar. But with this sort of conditions and how skiddy it is, the goalkeeper's got to be absolutely on his game to gather that in and he did really well sir 50 minutes gone Brentford leading Wolves by a goal to nil having won only one of their last nine meetings with the visitors none of the last five on home soil Max Kilman forward from the back just looks like they've decided to play a little bit higher up the pitch Wolves in this second half maybe that's the message from Gary O'Neill look I know we've got 10 men but we can't be dropping too deep we've still got to give Brentford something to think about well, from an attacking it, perspective it's not as if they've got electric pace up there is it it's not as if Mope is going to run away from you so you can probably hold a higher line and let them have the width Brentford and here's Lewis Potter his cross straight into the arms of Jose Sarr in the Wolves goal. Just going back to that chance for Sarabia, though. Really good play from Doherty. Played it across, and I think you're right. I think he did try and complicate it, trying to flick it up, rather than using his left foot just to sweep it in. Here's Jensen, five yards outside the box. Shifts the ball onto his right foot. Chips it on for De Silva. I think he was in two minds there. De Silva, whether to cross or to shoot, in the end he just side-foots the ball tamely behind for a goal kick, but he got the run on that Wolves back line. Clever play from Jensen. Well, I really hope that he's not trying to shoot here because it's on his weaker side. You know, it, the ball's going to be slippy. All you need to do is just cushion, cushion side foot that across for one of your strikers to head it in. I just hope he wasn't trying to take the strike because if he was, it was terrible. 52 gone. Brentford 1, Wolves nil. You're listening to Talk Sport 2. And I'll continue coverage from the FA Cup third round. And Saar plays it over the halfway line and into the Brentford half of the pitch. Totti nods it down, but it's collected by De Silva. You wonder how much of the second half he will play, having been out of the team for a long time due to injury, De Silva, but still looks full of running at this moment. Here's Collins, the former Wolves defender, plays it out to the right-hand side. Left hand side, I should say, and Lewis Potter. And he's back now with the goalkeeper. And Brentford will build again with Pinnock. But what it does do for Wolves, if they are higher, it means their forward players can just try and press a little bit more as a as a unit, as three of them, rather than just Cunha on his own. If you push up the pitch, it gives you an opportunity. I think Pedro Neto is being ready, by the way, down in front of us. Sitting in the front row of that Wolverhampton Wanderers bench, so they are going to make what you have to say is a very positive change. The 10 men, they trail by a goal to nil. Here's De Silva over on that far touchline for Brentford. Just lays off the ball to Jan Elton, gets it back again. Over on the far side, then a attempt at a cross. Here's a pretty wayward one in the end, and it will be a goal kick. Four Wolves, and here comes Pedro Neto. As Dean Ashton said, still very high in terms of Premier League assists, despite the fact he's not played a lot of football recently. Neto, who started the season in sparkling form, seven assists and a goal in the Premier League. Came on as a substitute against Everton in a 3-0 win in Wolves' last Premier League game. Hadn't played since the end of October before that. Injured at home to Newcastle. Certainly he will add an injection of pace, Pedro Neto. And it's Pablo Sarabia who is making way. Yeah, no surprise. 
you know, he was struggling defensively, wasn't he? Towards the end of that second half, Sarabia had his opportunity there at the start of this one, just flicking over. But this player is quality, Neto. They've really missed him through his injuries. It's taken him a while, it seems. It's taken Sarabia a while to get off the pitch. He knows his team are 1-0 down in the FA Cup, does he? <laughs> Honestly, put a jog on, son. <laughs> Doesn't look particularly happy, Sarabia, that he's That's being probably, replaced. And, and that'll, that'll probably be why. <laughs> Does get a handshake from Gary O'Neill, his manager. Ten minutes gone in the second half. Wolves trailing here. 1 0. Their away record has been suspect this season. Wolves unbeaten their last eight games at Molyneux, only won two of their last nine on their travels, including that big win here in the Premier League just ten days ago. Here's Pedro Neto straight into the action, controls the ball beautifully on his chest down by the right corner, flagged little back heel for Semedo, who's made the overlapping run, and his cross to the near post is hooked away by Janel, but some encouragement for those gold-shirted Wolves fans behind the goal. Yeah, it took him a while to warm up, didn't it, Neto? All <laughs> of about 3.4 seconds. Ball came across, lovely chest down, clever little back heel, into Semedo's path. Here is Semedo, takes the throw in, finds Neto down by the corner flag. Neto trying to bamboozle his marker with nifty footwear, then he jumped over the ball in front of Keane Lewis Potter, but it had gone out and it will be a cold kick, but he looks like a player keen to make up for lost time, Pedro Neto, maybe keen to catch the eye of one or two of those big clubs between now and the end of the transfer window as well. I'm not sure the ball did go out, did it? I'm not sure either, it looked like it was... Still there. Lovely bit of skill, though, wasn't it, from Neto? The old flip-flap didn't quite come off, but confident start, isn't it? Is that the official terminology, flip-flap? Apparently. Lewis Potter cutting in from the left-hand side onto his right foot, being urged to shoot by the Brentford fans as he bundled over inside the D on the edge of the box by Bellegarde. Right in front of the referee, free kick for Brentford. Positive play by Lewis Potter. Maybe could have got the shot away. Quick at but he's won a free kick in a very promising position. Oh, I just thought Bellegarde did well, though. I, I didn't think he genuinely committed, and he didn't. It was just about Lewis Potter. He was waiting just to get Bellegarde in the right position. As soon as he felt any contact, he went down. It's not a foul. He has just won this. He, again, once again, it's where the player, the attacker, as I should know, steps into the defender to create the contact. And there's, a, there's a huge difference. Was that a Dean Ashton party trick? <laughs> Always. <laughs> Doesn't even try and deny it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Gary O'Neill will be very unhappy if this leads to a second Brentford goal. Free kick just inside the D. There is central on the edge of that penalty area. Away to our left-hand side. Four Brentford players stood around the ball. Jose Sarr just organising what will be a three-man wall. It's quite a big wall as well. All three centre-backs, Kilman, Bueno and Totti part of it and the moment Jose Sarr is almost sat down on his near post well I always think who's got the finesse from this position oh there's a shot Mope getting involved <laughs> with Jose with a goalkeeper here well he echoes of uh, Emmy Martinez <laughs> against Neil Mope which was uh, a real comedy moment I don't know why he's over there because you know but Jose Sarr's obviously just trying to line the wall up and I think Mope has gone to try and stand in front of him to stop him lining it up, which is just ridiculous. And all it's done is cause delay and confusion. That might just play into Brentford's hands. I think it will be Keane Lewis Potter when the free kick is eventually taken. Jose Sarr in conversation uh, with the referee. Just pointing out that Neil Mope was getting a, a bit too close and personal. Well, that's what he's doing. He's standing in front of the goalkeeper. Well, that's not illegal, though, is it? As long as as long as he's ten yards away. Mope chipping away, chirping away in the ear of Jose Sarr. They've had a lot of time here, Brentford, to work out what they want to do with a free kick. And now he comes back on side, Mope. He Jose, like his work is done. Jose Sarr has just taken a step towards his right-hand post. The wall is shielding the left side of the goal it will be Lewis Potter who strikes it right footed the wolf did its job I think it was Totti who might have taken one 
full in the face there, but the ball rebounds away and it's all the way back with Thomas Dracosia. I always think those ones that are really close to the edge of the box, it always reminds me of Azola. You know, that it needs that finesse. It needs maybe just a one-step flick over the top. He was the master at it. Here's Pert Harris for Brentford. Out to Lewis Potter on the left-hand side. Now Jensen being urged to shoot by the Brentford fans. Checks back on his left foot instead, then chips it towards the far post, but to nobody in particular. And it's chested back to the goalkeeper, Saar by Doherty. Still 1-0 to Brentford here against the 10 men. Fulham leading at half-time against Rotherham by a goal to nil. It's Spurs nil, Burnley nil. That game half an hour old and he's live over on Talk Sport right now as Kilman scoops his clearance into the Wolves dugout down below us. Looks like another Brentford change in the offing. I can see some activity down on the B's bench just to our left-hand side. It may well be another of the youngsters, Michael Olak Igby, who will be coming on. This tie isn't over yet, though, Dean Ashton, particularly with the added guile and the penetration of Neto. As long as it stays 1-0, even with 10 men, Gary O'Neill will fill his chance, have an opportunity to salvage it. Kilman wins it back on the edge of the penalty area, prods it forward, looking for Belagar, but across comes Collins, and then it's helped back by Zanka to his goalkeeper, Strakosrus. Distribution has not been great tonight, and he's played that one straight out of play for a Wolves throw. No, he's not looked particularly comfortable. It's good work from Cunha just to chase him down, and make him have to play that first time, and he played it right between Zanka and De Silva. But it's how much of a risk do you take if you're, if you're Wolves, and when do you take that risk? Do you try and hold out until the last 10 minutes and then have a real good go? Back now with Jose Sarr, all in yellow. The Wolves goalkeeper away to our left. Long punt up field from him. Collins there in front of Neto, his former teammate. Samedo can only hook the ball out of play. And it will be a Brentford throw midway inside their own half. We've played 61 minutes. It's still Brentford 1, 10 man Wolves nil. It's a, a key feature of Thomas Frank's Brentford team is that they don't tend to take a strike on, hopefully. You know, they really work on the percentages of the angles of the cross when you have bodies in the box. Something they work incredibly hard on. And so, therefore, they, you know, they they do maybe pass up chances to shoot. Here's Wolves on their counter. Yeah, Cunha leading the charge. Four on four momentarily. Neto to his right. Neto into the penalty area. Cunha continued his run. Neto tried to slide it forward, but it's blocked away by Collins and out for a throw. They were just a bit short-handed there. Brentford defensively, and they're going to make a change. I wondered how long Josh De Silva on his return from injury would last. Well, off he goes, and on comes Michael Olak Higby, the 19-year-old England under-20 international. De Silva getting a warm ovation from the Brentford fans. He was certainly one of their brightest performers in the first half, Dean Ashton. He was brilliant, and you can just see he sort of ran out of fitness, really, and they won't want to take too many chances with him. So... Well, like Higby, given a chance, I saw him come on at Sheffield United. He looked bright, he looked lively. Young player that's desperate to, to make an impression. Wolves have a throw, trailing by a goal to nil here on Talk Sport 2. Alex Crook and Dean Ashton, your commentary team, Nelson Samedo, to take that throw in. Belegard chests it down and he's wrestling with King Lewis Potter and he's managed to win his side a corner. Very industrious there from the Frenchman Bellegarde, signed as a replacement for Matthias Nunez after his big money move to Manchester City in the summer. And these could be crucial moments for Wolves. Set plays, especially with Neto now on the pitch, his delivery normally excellent. And they make the most of one of these. So Neto with a left-footed delivery from the right-hand side. And it's headed away at the near post by Pinnock and Neto hoping that it will just... Spoon back out for another corner, it does so. Bellegarde's come short, belatedly spotted by Damsgaard. It wasn't the best of deliveries by Neto first time around, but he's going to get another chance here. Does go short, in fact, to Bellegarde. Rolls it back to Neto, and Neto on the edge of the area finds Doyle. Doyle with a left-footed strike into the top corner. Well, he doesn't do tappings, and Tommy Doyle has opened his Wolves account in emphatic fashion here. 
left footed arrow shot into the top corner he celebrates with the Wolverhampton Wanderers fans and the 10 men are back in this FA Cup tie back on terms in his Brentford 1 Wolves 1 oh that is special what a special strike this is from Tommy Doyle He's got so much ability in both feet, which is why he's so comfortable. He went as if it was going to be the right, tucked it back onto his left and absolutely arrows it into the top corner. It's absolutely sumptuous from Tommy Doyle. He it's his first it up. It was brilliant. It's his first goal, Doyle, since that wonder strike in the FA Cup quarterfinal last season. And Wolverhampton Wanderers against the odds have got back on level terms. 65 gone, Brentford 1, Wolves 1. Game on now, Dean Ashton. Stunning, wasn't it? Stunning, and that's what they'll be after. Obviously, Neto has come on. You thought they were going to take the court. They took it short, worked it to the edge of the area. Sometimes those sort of goals are just undefendable. It's just such a wonderful strike from Doyle. The way he struck it is past Strakosha before he even really sees the flight of it. He dived. I think just to save face, it was past him. And all of a sudden, it's those Wolves fans away to our right in that far corner who are making the majority of the noise inside the G-Tech. Brentford 1, Wolves 1 on TalkSport 2 and already a contender for goal of this third round. Now, what have Brentford got by way of reply against the 10 men? Having brought a couple of youngsters off the bench. It was interesting, wasn't it, that Thomas Frank, so far not using the more experienced players, the likes of Baptiste, deciding to go for the younger players. Might you regret that now, 1-1? I think possibly, but there's still plenty of, uh, of experience in his side. And he's got an extra player, let's not forget. You know, Wolves... So early on losing a player. And you mentioned it at the start of the second half, the fact that they just squeezed, didn't they? They weren't sat back. They've squeezed right up that Wolves back line. It gives you so much more of a, an opportunity then. And credit to Gary O'Neill for that. Yeah. And, and that's what he's very good at. Sizing up an opponent. Normally coming up with a game plan from kickoff. In this case, that game plan went out the window when Joe Gomez was sent off very early. But clearly at half-time, he spotted maybe that, as you said, Brentford didn't necessarily have the pace to really get in behind his team and therefore urge them to get higher up the pitch. And well, they're making mistakes now, Brentford. That is a corner kick, very cheaply conceded by Ethan Pinnock, right in front of the Wolves fans. And that's, that's what also I'm sure Gary O'Neill and his coaching staff would have said. We get a goal here with the run that Brentford have been on and the lack of confidence we can win it or we can get a result that's I'm sure something they would have been talking about and they've got 23 minutes to pull off what really would be an improbable victory here Neto with a corner from the left hand side it's cleared back out to Wolves number 7 Neto toying at the moment with Oleg Higby and then getting his cross into the area only cleared as far as Doyle is going to shoot again here from the edge of the area it's blocked bravely by Jensen. Well, I think it hit him on the back. He's gone down holding his head. The referee has had to stop play. But that shot from Doyle once again was full of power, full of venom, Dean Ashton. Well, credit to Matthias Jensen. He got his body in the way of it. Oh, Tommy Doyle absolutely melts this strike, honestly. Absolutely flush. Unfortunately for Jensen, he had to be in the way of it. I don't even think he probably saw it, Jensen, before it struck him. Again, we're not quite sure exactly where, but he went down pretty groggy and the referees called the medics over pretty quickly. But again, on the edge of the box, Tommy Doyle, as that fell, Doherty just laid it back to him. And oh, it's had him a disservice. It has hit him on the head, hasn't it? Hit him right on the, the top of the head and the strike was so, so pure with so much pace on it. Was that going in, potentially? Possibly. Oh, possibly. It was going to that same corner where he almost burst the net a few minutes ago. Tommy Doyle, his first Wolves goal, counselling out Neil Mopé's strike, which was also hit with some power at the end of the first half. And it's Brentford 1, Wolves 1, Wolves down to 10 men, remember. 
Xiao Gomez sent off early here on Talk Sport 2. Over on Talk Sport still, Tottenham nil, Burnley nil. And it's Fulham 1, Rotherham nil, seven minutes into the second half in that one. It's a very strong Spurs lineup that Aj Postacoglu has named as well. Tottenham having been dumped out early in the League Cup. I'm not sure that Jensen's going to be able to continue here. Shandon Baptiste, who himself was an injury doubt coming into the game, is going to come on. Yeah, just got into a huddle as well, Brentford players. I'm pretty sure just trying to, to say, look, we need a bit of composure. We've just lost it since the goal. Let's remember we've got an extra player. Let's keep the ball. We need to tire Wolves out. Wolves, because of that goal, have had a little lift of energy. Yeah, it's a terrific noise being generated from those two and a half thousand travelling fans. Not the easiest trip on a Friday night, particularly not with all the issues on public transport that we've seen over the past 72 hours, but they always travel in great number. And I think they'll be really encouraged with what they've seen from their team in the second half. Meanwhile, Brentford are going to have to make a change. Matthias Jensen is just handing the armband over to Vitaly Janelt. And he does look... Very groggy, having taken that ball clean in the face from Doyle. Shandon Baptiste coming on for him. So a straight swap at the heart of the Brentford midfield. And I think we're going to see Yama Yuk, the young Ukrainian, come on as well for Brentford. I mean, Thomas Frank will be so disappointed. I mean, he played 80 minutes with... A man advantage if his side don't get the job done tonight. I think what will really frustrate him is they've lost control of the game. They should have control of this whole half, really, with maybe the odd counter-attack for Wolves. Not the fact that now Wolves look as if they're controlling the game. Now what will frustrate Thomas Frank is that loss of control. And maybe with these substitutions, that's what he's trying to get back. Well, <laughs> they're going to start the game a man like Brentford because the substitutions haven't been made. And I think it's because there's an issue with the electronic board, is it? Well, also, I think maybe because the ball is technically still in play, isn't it? With the referee just dropping it. Correct. It's probably the reason why they then have to wait until it properly goes out. Thomas Frank still got his arms out as if to say... What's going on? Yeah. Well, at the moment, it's 10 against 10 here with 18 minutes to go. It's been... An Really enthralling second half to this point. Long punt up field by Brentford. Straight into the path of Jose Sarr, who just dabs the ball down inside the penalty area. Also, another feature for Gary O'Neill is he's happily played three up. Just Tommy Doyle in the middle. So five, one in the middle in Tommy Doyle, and then the three forward players. You know, that is an aggressive way in this second half that Gary O'Neill has set his team up. It would be some performance if they could find a way to win this game with 10 men from a goal down. And having played a man like for 80 minutes, here's Neto though inside the penalty. They look dangerous all of a sudden. Wolves every time they come forward. Kilman trying to get the ball out from under his feet. Curls one left footed, always wide. And well, with the greatest respect to the world, Max Kilman probably not the player that you want that chance to fall no, to. No, just give it back to Neto. What are you thinking? that you're the one that's meant a jink and curl it into the far corner. No, just pass it back to Neto, let him carry on. Well, Yamayuk is uh, on here in place of Zanka. So it's going to be another reorganisation from Thomas Frank, the Brentford manager. Baptiste on to replace the stricken Jensen as well. I'll let Dean Ashton work out what formation Thomas Frank is going for here. Well, I mean, it looks like a it looks like a four with Jan Elt at left back, Olekig beat at right back, and then Pinnock and Collins as the two the two centre backs. Which I was surprised really that that change hasn't been made sooner. When you've got that extra player, do you need you know three centre backs in your team? Baptiste has gone in alongside Damsgaard. And now they've got four up there. So a very proactive move from Thomas Frank. Clearly he's not that infused by the prospect of a replay. Probably neither of these two would have really wanted this game to end as a draw. Although Wolves would have taken it at half-time for sure. 
1 1 the score. You're listening to Talk Sport 2. Sliding challenge from Semedo, and he was caught there by King Lewis Potter. The Brentford fans up in arms around us, but free kick has gone. Wolves his way. Half time over on Talk Sport. Rather surprisingly, perhaps it's Tottenham nil, Burnley nil. And still Fulham lead Rotherham of the Championship by a goal to nil. In all of those games, FA Cup third round ties. Free kick for Wolves in the right back position. And it will be their goal scorer. What a strike it was to Tommy Doyle to take it with 15 minutes to play here at the GTEC. Long punt up field. Good header away by Pinnock at the heart of the Brentford defence. And then Semedo almost rugby tackling Mope. It's a free kick on the edge of the centre circle. Mope wants to take it quickly. Thought about knocking it long for Lewis Potter in the end. Went short for Yanel, who is now occupying that left back position as Dean Ashton correctly spotted. And here, over on the far right-hand side, is the youngster, Oleg Igby. Bags of pace, the 19-year-old. Can he work his way into a crossing position? Now plays it back out on that far side to Yarmaluk. Now Pinnock on the edge of the centre circle. Everybody bar Strakosha, the Brentford goalkeeper, inside Wolves' territory. Here's Lewis Potter on the near side. 1-1 the score. Pinnock infield for... Yamayu glides over the challenge from Doyle, but he just ran into Neto, and then Neto was fouled, having, for me, already lost control of the ball there, Pedro Neto. Silly free kick for Damsgaard to concede. Yeah, it was clever, really, from Neto. Almost jumped into Damsgaard to, uh, to create the foul once again. They've just lost any rhythm, Brentford. That rhythm that they had in the, the end of the first half where they were switching the play quickly, and like I said, they don't just throw it in there. It has to be right before they do. And Wolves are happy with that. Ball back to Strakoshep in the six-yard box away to our right. Again, not brilliant with his uh, distribution, Thomas Strakoshep. In fact, Wolves could take advantage. Maybe a better ball from Bellegarde and Neto was in. Still not cleared their lines yet, Brentford. Being put under real pressure inside the penalty area and Bellegarde has won his team a corner over on the far side. They have completely lost their way, Brentford. Absolutely struggling with just the simple things now. That decision-making has gone. You know, that just needed to go back to your goalkeeper and let him clear it, as Collins is trying to, to say to Jan Alp. Going to be Neto to take the corner, left-hand side, 13 minutes to go. Wolves 1, Brentford 1 on Talk Sport 2. Are we in for a grandstand finish under the lights of the GTEC? Neto with the ball into the area, plenty of height to aim at. It's Doherty who meets it and can only send his header glancing wide of the far post. Frustrated with himself there, Doherty, because that was a half chance. And here come Brentford looking immediately to put themselves on the attack. King Lewis Potter running at Doyle. Infield he comes for the for uh, Damsgaard, Damsgaard out to the left-hand side. A deep cross towards Mopé inside the area. Still not clear yet. Kept alive by Yamayuk. And here is the youngster, Oleg Igby, but too strong there was Belagar, but they've won it straight back. Brentford, Wolves can't get out momentarily. Damsgaard fizzes the pass into Keen Lewis Potter on the edge of the 18-yard box. Jan out with the Back heel for Damsgaard once again. Now Collins well forward from the back. Once again, a swarm of red and white shirts all around the Wolves penalty area. In it comes towards Pert Harris. Couldn't get the ball out from under his studs. And the shot from Yamayuk is charged down on the edge of the area. Well defended again by Wolves. Yeah, it was a great first touch, actually. Pert Harris, well, he just couldn't swivel and take the strike on. Eventually, when he did, Wolves defenders was around him just to just to block the oncoming shot. Better from Brentford, switching it quicker, moving the ball quicker. What are you going to do against ten players? Can they find a way into the fourth-round draw here, Brentford, against the ten men? 1-1 one, one the score. Both managers, Gary O'Neill and Thomas Frank, a few feet to his left, urging their sides forward. Brentford looking to put their terrible Premier League form behind them. Wolves looking to back up what they did here in the league a few days ago and beat the bees in their own backyard. 
It's Brentford in possession, high up the field. With Yanel. Yanel into Pert Harris on the edge of the area. Given back to Yanel. Now Lewis Potter. Chance to cross. Mope chests it down, but chests it away from goal. And poke clear by Doyle, the Wolves goal scorer. Collins there in front of Cunha. Can't keep the ball in play and Wolves have a throw inside their own half. It stays 1-1. Yeah, they've been very good at that, Wolves, to be fair to them. Whenever that ball has gone into the area, they have flooded the box with defensive numbers. So then if the touch isn't perfect, they're there just to block or to clear the ball away. Because, like I said, just a hopeful ball in is not going to work when you've got the physicality and the height that the Wolves have got in their defence. Are we going to get a winner in the final 10 minutes? Feels that way. I think both are trying. Both are going for it. I don't think they're, they're letting up. Oh, Semedo almost caught in possession inside his own half. He's wrestled Lewis Potter to the ground. The Brentford fans around us want the free kick, not given by the referee. Neto into Bellegarde on the edge of the area. Doyle from 40 yards out being urged to shoot by the Wolves fans. Have he scored one stunner tonight already? The on-loan Manchester City man. Here down the left-hand side is Bellegarde. Cunha into Doyle. Can't get it out from under his feet. Kept alive by Totti, though. Kilman is well forward from the back. The Wolves captain. Out to the right and Neto. He's made a real impact since coming on early in this second half. Pedro Neto. He's been dispossessed here, though, inside the Brentford half. And it's Damsgaard who just plays it back to Keen Lewis Potter. Now Shandon Baptiste comes forward towards the halfway line. Gary O'Neill still urging his side on down below us. Pert Harris picks it up in the left wing position. There was a foul on Damsgaard by Neto. And it's going to be a free kick for Brentford and a yellow card. For, was it actually uh, Santiago Bueno who's been shown the yellow card? I think that was for... Was it for kicking the ball away as well? Back to his goalkeeper... A little bit of time wasting, maybe. I think so, because I think it was Neto originally that yeah, made that was the, my first, the first challenge. Initial reaction. Well, once again, Brentford with a chance to load up the edge of the penalty area. Free kick taken short by Pinnock. Yanel plays it down this near side to Lewis Potter. He's running at Samedo. Back to Vitali Yanel. And now Pinnock, 30 yards from goal. Switches the play out to Collins on the right-hand side. Here is Yarmachuk with a deep delivery to the far post towards Lewis Potter. It was an important header away by Semedo. We've just had the aerial advantage there over King Lewis Potter, but they're still coming forward. Brentford in search of this late winner. Damsgaard into Lewis Potter, trying to find Mope inside the area. And it isn't a convincing clearance away by Doherty, but it is picked up. Only inside the centre circle by Pinnock and he has to swivel and play it back to his goalkeeper, Strakosha. Eight minutes to play, 1-1 on well, that, Talk Sport that's 2. That's better, though. You've just got to keep the pressure on constantly. You know, as soon as that ball goes out, get hold of it quickly, switch it back out again. And constantly keep the pressure on, bombard the box with crosses if you need to. And then follow up for those ones that are headed out. And that's where your opportunity is going to be. Wolverhampton Wanderers in fine form coming into this game, winning each of their last three in the Premier League. In fact, they've taken uh, 25 points from the last 15 matches. That after losing four of their first five games this season, when there were one or two question marks about the appointment of Gary O'Neill, those doubters certainly have been silenced. And I think they'll be silenced as well, Dean, by the way that his team have dug in tonight with 10 men for so long, but found a way to get themselves back into the game. I think they've been brilliant, considering the early setback, the way they've set themselves up to be really, really hard to break down. You know, the fact that they've only allowed three shots on target from Brentford's point of view, I think says everything about how well they've defended their own box. There's still a bit of defending to do, though. Seven minutes to play. Keane Lewis Potter down the left-hand side, infield for Damsgaard, trying to slide it forward. Lewis Potter picks it up inside the area. Yano with a clever cross towards the far post. They were queuing up in red and white, but again, Wolves defended the territory well. And the sliding challenge to win it back over on that far side is from Cunha again. How hard has he worked, Mateus Cunha? Yeah, he's had to. They all have. 
and they've needed to. That was a decent ball from Janel. They're going each other's way. Holler kick beat at the back post. I think they're going to be grateful, Wolves, for this uh, winter break in the Premier League. Although if it ends 1-1 tonight, there will be an extra game for them to contend with before the month is out. Here's Keen Lewis Potter into Jan out on the edge of the area. Time running out for Brentford against the 10 men of Wolves to win this cup tie. Lewis Potter, left-hand side. Forward it goes to Damsgaard. He's got some space inside the penalty area. He cuts the cross back. Oh, and it's been steered wide. What an opportunity that was. After the shot initially, that I think was mishit by Shandon Baptiste. And I think it was Pert Harris in there. Didn't know a great deal about it from eight yards out. And he's just prodded it wide, Dean Ashton. Yeah, it's a really good run from Damsgaard, just off the back of Semedo. And then he cuts the ball back to Baptiste. It's a horrible strike. He really bobbles it. And it's going very, very wide. He does the right thing, Pert Harris. He just sticks out a leg, just trying to deflect it in towards the goal, put too much on it and put it wide. It's half a chance, but really, Baptiste, that was the chance. He needed to strike that much better. Only five minutes of normal time to play. Still 1-1 here on TalkSport 2. We went to a replay live on TalkSport last night. Nothing to separate Crystal Palace and Everton in the first All-Premier League tie. Nothing separating Tottenham and Burnley at half-time over on TalkSport. 0-0 there and nothing to split these two. Here's Cunha, though, running purposely into the penalty area. Had his pocket picked by Yarmachuk. But Cunha's won it back. And as he won the free kick, referee had a good view of it, says no, Cunha drops to his knees in frustration. I think probably the referee called that one right. I think he was looking for the contact, Dean. I think they both were, to be honest, and he just let them play on until there was a winner. And here's Janel strolling forward over the halfway line. Opportunity again for Brentford to get bodies inside that penalty area. Mope trying to hold it up on the edge of the box, but he's got plenty of wolf shirts around him. Damsgaard into Jan out. Here is Mope, 22 yards out. Forward he goes. And an opportunity to cross towards the far post. Oh, brilliant save by the goalkeeper. And the rebound is wide. King Lewis Potter with the initial effort that was saved by Saar. And it was Damsgaard on the follow-up, and he couldn't turn it home. I mean, it's a brilliant chance for Lewis Potter at the back post. I don't know why, but he doesn't look convinced with his own header. He doesn't go at it with any force. He just kind of lets it hit his head, so the power's not there. Sark can save with his feet, and then he can thank his defenders for getting in the way of the rebound. It's a decent save, though, from Saar, but nowhere near enough power from Lewis Potter with the header just didn't look convinced and sometimes when that ball's coming over a defender do you really fancy it if it's gonna end up you cracking heads maybe with the defender but you've got to go for it you've got to put the power into it might that be the last big opportunity that Brentford get to win the game how much will Wolves be indebted to their goalkeeper Jose Sarp come the full-time whistle 1-1 it stays Brentford now looking the more likely to win the tie tonight and avoid the prospect of a replay at Molyneux. Here's Neto, though, on the counter-attack. He's in behind Damsgaard, and he's running at Pinnock, and he's into the penalty area. Only Bellegarde up in support. Pinnock prods it behind, and I think in the end, Neto, with the lack of Wolves players around him, was content to settle for the corner. Yeah, he wanted to play that in, didn't he, with his right foot. It was only Bellegarde that managed to get up into support, so he thought, I'll check back. Little touch from Pinnock, and actually, it's a really good situation again for Wolves from a set play. It's their fifth corner. The goal came from a corner on this same right-hand side, a short corner routine. Doyle with a brilliant finish from outside the area to get them back on terms and cancel out Neil Mopar's first-half opener. Here's Bellegarde. They picked out Doyle again. Doyle in towards Bellegarde this time, opted not to shoot, and Brentford smuggle it clear. And here they come on the counter-attack. Ola Kigby to the frustration of the Brentford supporters, just delayed getting the ball forward, and Wolves have got plenty of bodies back now. Here's Shandon Baptiste. Into the last two minutes we go. Pert Harris forward to Mope. Mope on the edge of the area, he has to shoot, instead finds Damsgaard. Damsgaard trying to work the ball into a shooting position, but he's crowded out of it by Semedo. Wolves working tirelessly again here. It's Janot with a cross to the far post, Pert Harris was there, and it's headed behind. 
by Doherty for a Brentford corner in the 89th minute of the GTEC. Yeah, they are looking fatigued, aren't they, Wolves? But again, if you float that cross up, they'll deal with it. Short corner taken on the far side. Wolves pen back inside their own half, but it's a really poor decision by Oleg Igby. Looked like Wolves might counter, but Brentford have won it back. Pinnock has stayed forward inside the area. Drills in the cross-cam shot, this half-cleared. Pinnock with a header, back into a dangerous position. Nodded clear again by Wolves. And here's Pinnock now, playing as a left winger momentarily. And yeah, now that's a poor delivery. Got right underneath the cross and it's behind for a goal kick and we're into the last minute of the 90, it's 1-1. Oh, you've got to try harder than that. You've got to make sure you don't gift those just relaxes in defensive play just because you're giving the ball away, just because you've not taken your time with the cross. It just saps the energy out of the attack. Wolves are going to make a change here, probably just to run down the clock as much as anything, but Jean-Ric de Bellegarde is slowly making his way over to the touchline. And coming on for his debut is the Zimbabwean midfielder signed from Ipswich Town in the summer. Tawanda Chirua. As we move into stoppage time at the end of the game, five added minutes for one of these two to force a winner and avoid a replay. I think got... Wolves will settle for the draw. Of course they would. Of course they would with the position that they were in early in the game. But for me... You know, I just think now it'd be great if it was going to go to penalties. We've seen it in the Carabao Cup. I think, personally, I'd love to see it in the FA Cup. It just makes for that extra bit of drama. Well, there is a lot of talk that this will be the, the last season where we get third and fourth round replays. Of course, they've already been scrapped in the latter stages of the competition. We've played a minute of the five added on already. Nobody leaving early, all 18,000 fans pretty much still in their seats here. 1-1 the score. After what's been a pretty entertaining game, to be fair, for the neutral. Well, I think Wolves have made that as well, especially in the second half. They've given themselves a chance, haven't they, with the way that they've approached the game. Higher line, look to attack when they can in numbers, and Cunha's away again. Cunha driving towards the penalty area, finds Neto. Neto's going to try and shift the ball onto his left foot. Carls, the effort towards the top corner, but high over the crossbar. Well, it was choreographed. You knew what he was going to do, Neto, but he wasn't too far away from pulling it off. He's capable, isn't he? More than capable. I thought, actually, the pass was on to Cunha. Cunha laid it off to him, and then he was in if he'd have just played it first time down the side. Instead, he then cut into traffic, tried to whip it into the far corner. Still a little bit rusty, though, isn't he, Neto? Cunha, for me, has been a contender for man of the match, the way that he's given Wolves that outlet, led the press, got back and done his defensive duty. I think he's been excellent. Here's King Lewis Potter for Brentford, down by the left corner flag. Still time for a winner, three added minutes remaining. Damsgaard in the box, finding Mope. Mope trying to shift it forward. It's only cleared as far as the edge of the penalty area. But Wolves, again, defend their lines. Here's Pinnock now. Plenty of red and white jerseys to aim at in the centre. Cross is headed up in the air by Bueno and expertly kept in play by Jose Sarr, climbing highest inside the penalty area and collecting the ball for his team. It's the Wolves fans who I think will go away happier if this scoreline stays intact with only a couple of minutes remaining of stoppage time now. 1-1 on Talk Sport 2. And ultimately, they would probably have to reflect Thomas Frank and his team and say they haven't been good enough in the final third. And that's been the big issue without Tony, certainly without Umbermo. They just haven't been clinical enough with any sort of opportunities that they've had. Here's Lewis Potter, still full of running, but dispossessed by Semedo, but he's won a corner. Well, this might be... Last chance territory, bit of afters involving Lewis Potter and Semedo, all rather unnecessary. I think Semedo was just delaying Lewis Potter, getting the ball back and taking the corner quickly. Referee is being surrounded by Wolves players. Jose Sarr has come a long way out of his area to get involved. What do you make of all this, Dean Ashton? A ridiculous, as always, <laughs> with these players, honestly. 
there was nothing really in it at all. It was just, yeah, he stopped him getting the ball. But by the way, there's multi-ball, so you don't even need to worry about that ball. Well, the yellow card is out. But then everyone piles in, don't they? Have to get involved. Neto's trying to get the referee to look and check with VAR for hands round the throat. Neil Mope, surprise, surprise, is right at the heart of it. And Neto is now almost praying to the referee to check the screen. Keen Lewis Potter has been shown a yellow card. He's convinced Neto that there were arms around the throat. He's still making that gesture to the referee, but it is just a yellow card for Keen Lewis Potter. Yeah, rightly so. I mean, he reacted, he didn't need to, it was a big push. And Semedo's Semedo, been called yeah. over and booked as well, and we're going to go into added on time at the end of added on time now. Such is the delay as this set piece is about to be taken. Neto still wants the referee to check. <laughs> I don't think run. he's going to do it, somehow. Mm. Well, maybe he is. Because play hasn't restarted and they are checking a potential red card for Keane Lewis Potter right at the end of the game. Well, again, once everyone jumps in, you can't really see what's happened and that's VAR yeah, probably take a... Well, we've a, not seen a replay yet here in the press box. Thomas Frank looks deeply unhappy. And still the referee, Tony Harrington, is not going to allow play to restart and still he's got Neto chuntering away in front of him well I, I thought Lewis Potter just did the push and then people got involved but as people have come running over someone grabbed someone's throat no no what a waste of everybody's time <laughs> corner kick will be taken one last chance for Brentford to win this game and it's helped towards the top corner but only into the arms of Jose Sarp and that probably Dean Ashton will be that we're into the 96th minute now yeah, you just wonder how much the referee will add on because of that stupidness. But Wolves, it's been a great performance with, with 10 players. It really has to put in the shift they have, to be organised, to be aware of when to counter and when not to. Here comes Jen out, though. Big roar goes up from the Brentford fans. He's over the halfway line. Pedro Neto coming across and winning the challenge and then... Screaming in the face of Yanel. I think he's a little bit het up, Pedro Neto, after that incident down by the corner flag. As Damsgaard plays the ball back to Pinnock inside the centre circle. Wolves fans crying for the full-time whistle. Gary O'Neill wants that as well. Down in front of us, but still play will continue. Not a bad ball into the Wolves penalty area. Comes to Mope on the edge of the box, and now Yanel. Keen Lewis Potter. Back to Damsgaard, they're trying to work space for a shot here, Brentford. Damsgaard curls it straight into the arms of Jose Saru, who collapses on top of the ball and Gary O'Neill turns away and walks purposely back to his seat. And he carries the look, Dean Ashton, of a manager who's done a job on Brentford in this second half. Yeah, yeah, they have, and they just haven't had the quality, haven't had the answers, have they? Brentford... Thomas Frank looks like a, a man that's severely disappointed. And Jose Sarr taunting the Brentford fans as the full-time whistle sounds. He's having to be dragged away by Nathan Collins, his former teammate. A very angry end to this All-Premier League Cup tie. It looked like it would be a very long evening for Wolves when Joao Gomez was sent off with only 10 minutes played for a challenge on the Achilles of Christian Norgaard. Brentford took until four minutes before half-time to make their numerical advantage tell when Neil Mope thrashed in his third goal of the season. But what an equaliser. Tommy Doyle with his first Wolves goal midway through the second half. And as the lights go out at the GTEC, the lights haven't gone out on Wolverhampton Wanderers in this season's FA Cup. And I think... Dean Ashton, Gary O'Neill would have settled for that at half-time. Yeah, and if you want a blueprint of how to play with 10 players, that is it. The way they defended their box was fantastic. The shape that they had, the organisation defensively, even from the forward players coming back into a shape. And, and they just said, you can have the wide areas, but there's no way you're cutting right through the middle of us. And Brentford just didn't have the answers. And they also carried a threat Wolves especially that second half when he just changed it slightly and added a forward up there with Gunya. They really 
showed that they had a threat and they created some chances, they created some set plays and got themselves back with a wonderful, wonderful goal from Tommy Doyle that deserved to get them back into the game. Thomas Frank, however, he will be so relieved to have Ivan Tony back. Yep, by the time Brentford play again, Ivan Tony will be there to spearhead the attack. And they'll be really frustrated, Brentford, and Thomas Frank in particular, that his side couldn't create more clear opportunities after playing for so long against 10 men. I think he'll talk about the quality needed. You know, they got themselves into so many good positions where it needed the right delivery or once the ball was in there, it needed the right touch, the right decision-making. They just haven't had it. And to be honest, they've struggled all season with it. And you just wonder how much of a difference Ivan Tony will make. And not only because of his quality, but what it does to the other players in his team. The lift it'll give them to have their talisman back. And I think he's much needed because they have got a tough, tough task in the Premier League to keep themselves away from that relegation zone now. Well, as Dean Ashton was speaking there, the Wolverhampton Wanderers players, Gary O'Neill, the manager, saluting those travelling supporters, Jose Sarr and Pedro Neto, the last to take the ovation. It's been a heroic effort, having played for 80 minutes with 10 men. They'll do it all again at Molyneux in 10 days' time because it's finished here at the GTEC Community Stadium. Brentford 1, Wolves 1. Don't forget, commentary continues right now over on Talk Sport, where it's still Tottenham nil, Burnley nil. Loads of FA Cup action coming your way tomorrow, including here on Talk Sport 2, where we've got Stoke against Brighton at 3 o'clock, followed by Chelsea against Preston at 5.30. But right now, here on Talk Sport 2, we're off to Hawaii for the PGA Tour Century Tournament of Champions with John Jackson. TalkSport 2, official broadcast partner of the Premier League.